Hello everyone, it's Raza Von Werder, aka Kelly Everts, talking about my life story, my private personal life. And right now I'm on the subject of when my mother got my dad to invite her new boyfriend husband into our apartment on Van Buren Street to live with us. I was with my dad when he invited the man, the man came. My mother was a very good con artist, very good brainwasher, manipulator. Someone asked me, was she a psychopath? And I, I, I don't know, but I've been studying since uh, in the last day or so. I've been looking up information about sociopaths, psychopaths, and um, narcissists. <clears throat> and from the information I gathered, a sociopath is made, and a psychopath is born. So, from I, I I believe that she's a she was a psychopath. She wasn't made because I spoke with my grandma about her, and my grandma says she was always like that from the time she was little. She never changed. And my aunt, if she had been a made sociopath by abuse or uh, trauma. Um, my aunt would have likewise been something like her because they were raised together, my aunt Dagmar. But my aunt was uh, a very normal person. She was not traumatized. She was not weird. She was not cruel. I, I really liked my aunt. Uh, okay, I'm talking about Marius Bernatas. So Marius we benefited a great deal from him. He, uh, when he, we, we left, we left, uh, well, first, Van Buren Street was a beautiful, beautiful apartment. My room looked right onto the library. Next door to the building was a library. And my room looked down one floor. I think we were three flights up. And the library, the children's section was two flights up. And my room looked right into the children's section of the library. It was there that I learned, while there, that I learned how to go to the library and take out books. And that started me on the road to being a bookworm my entire life. And to this day, I'm still a person who loves to study. Just, I used to read books all the time and, um, until I went half blind. And then I became one who, who just studies, you know, likes to learn things all the time. And so that was the beginning. Now, it was a beautiful, beautiful apartment. It had a round side to it. You know, the living room was round. And way at the end there was Marius' room. I don't remember the other rooms. I don't remember my parents' room. I don't remember my brother's room. I just remember Marius' room because they had me clean his room. The living room, the kitchen, the bathroom, and uh, my room. And it, was, it had a beautiful pantry, a, a wonderful pantry, because my mother was an expert cook, and she kept all her food cold in the pantry, because it was, wasn't heated. <clears throat> now, in the, uh, okay, so let's go along with that. Uh, so there was a scandal. My mother got pregnant. Now she's living with two men. She's living with my dad. And another man is in the house. Trouble. She's pregnant. She became very, very overwrought and nervous, a nervous, mean, aggressive wreck at the time she was pregnant. Because I remember drawing a picture of her. And she had on like a, you know, the way you wear a smock when you're, it was like a smock, dark blue. And I, I drew a picture of her ranting and raving, standing on top of the world like this, like a mon, you know, ranting and raving with anger. One day my uncle visited, and my, my aunt and uncle, and my uncle was a macho man. <clears throat> and Marius was sitting in the kitchen with the baby, the new baby, the ba baby was born, a baby was born sitting with the baby in his lap. And my dad comes over and says, give me the child or my child. I don't know if he said my child or the child. 
because my mother said go get the child I think she wanted to feed the child and Marius must have been drinking and he said it's my child so an argument ensued the next thing I remember my uncle was beating the crap out of Marius my father wouldn't hurt anyone he would never hit anyone he was totally nonviolent but my uncle beat the living daylights out of Marius and I remember Marius on the floor in the kitchen we ran for cover <clears throat> and the next day and for weeks following when he came home from work because he worked every day he had the worst black eyes the worst screwed up face I've ever seen in my life I mean I've never seen eyes so big big black horrendous like that he didn't move so a problem began a serious problem began about Marius the child the paternity of the child my mom getting going moving she told my father and me that he was going with us when he settled his affairs whatever he was doing in the city he was to come and live with us at the farm. We were going to, all these pipe dreams, we are going to start a Boy Scout campground on our land. We had 10 acres. We were going to start a campground. We are going to do all sorts of things which never happened. My father used to visit, used to work, used to do things. Marius was there. Marius had his own room upstairs. We, we had three bedrooms upstairs. It was unheated. The farmhouse was extremely uncomfortable. It had no central heating. Oh, yes, it had heating downstairs. It had a coal and wood stove in the kitchen. You think that sounds, it was easy? It wasn't easy. And then it had a coal and wood stand-up stove in the living room. Upstairs, it didn't have any heating. But here's the worst part, it had no hot water. <clears throat> Now imagine a whole winter without hot water. How do you bathe? You don't. I didn't. And my mother didn't teach me. You know, she didn't get it. She could have bought bottles of rubbing alcohol and said, put this on a cloth and clean your whole body with the alcohol. Because alcohol kills 100% of all germs and bacteria. She didn't teach me anything. The bathroom had, even, even though it was downstairs, had no heat at all. No heat. So all winter it was freezing cold. How could you turn on the water and cold water in a cold shower with no heat? You'd have to be an Eskimo or a seal or something. Once in a blue moon, we had this, you know how they do in the cowboy movies. In the hotel, they show you he's in a tub, he's in a metal tub. Once in a blue moon, we did that, but that was extremely uncomfortable because my brother was running around, and we had to do it in the kitchen, and he had to be naked. There was no private place. It was in the kitchen. So once in a blue moon, I remember once I didn't take a bath. It must have been for months. No kind of bath. No kind of bath. And I remember my mother finally told me, take off your clothes. And I remember my t-shirt that I never took off. She literally had to peel it off me. It was stuck to my body. <laughs> to this day, I have a phobia about cold, cold water, and bathing when it's cold but when when I took off my clothes and my mother helped me bathe or something I don't remember what she was doing but she got to see my body I think that's one of the reasons one of the reasons she had a lot of reasons to hate me because my body was so beautiful and perfect and that's when she saw me naked the first time you know as I was like 10 years old but it was still beautiful I had a gorgeous beautiful body my body was developing Nine, ten years old, I was developing. I had to wear a top. My breasts were blossoming. My vaginal hair was growing in quite a ways. Everybody took note of it. All right, so to be continued.